What's going on YouTube? It's time for a new build. And this is one that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've never done a three inch build. And I wanted to do a 4S powered three inch build that is just off the ever loving hook. And this is the one that we're gonna do. This is the Tomo Quads newest version of the XBL called the XBL2 Extreme Edition. And this thing is just beefed up, hardcore, ready to rock and roll. Okay, so let's get right into the build and let's talk about what all we're using here for parts. Um, we got the XBL2 kit right here. Um, the, the main plate on this is 4.5 millimeters thick. So this plate will be able to take some serious abuse. Um, the next thing we're going to use is we're using the HGLRC XJB F4 25 Fly Tower Micro. Um, this, this is a 25 amp 4-in-1 BL Heli S ESC, um, and then it is a F4 Omnibus flight controller. For the motors... I went with these from Brother Hobby, and these are the Brother Hobby 1407 3600 KV. And then for the props, I went with the Rotor X, which I guess is kind of considered one of the old standbys for three inch props. It's the 3040T tri blade. And on the thrust tests, this was producing. Um, 600 and I believe like 10 grams or something like that. There's a little over a touch over 600 grams of thrust per motor. So this ought to be absolutely ridiculous. For the camera here, we're going with the new Runcam Micro Swift. And this build is already set up specifically for that camera. For the VTX, we're going to use the Esheen VTX-03. So that should be really good. It's 200 milliwatt. And then for batteries here, I went with one of my favorite Ohio-based shops, Ready Made RC, and we're going to use a 4S 60C 850 milliamp. And then, of course, my all-time favorite for, um, for receivers, I'm going to use the Lemon DSMX SAT receiver. All right, let's just look real quick at what all comes in the kit so that you can see you got your uh, bottom plate, as I stated before, 4.5 millimeter thickness, super heavy duty, some of the highest quality carbon fiber that I've seen in a kit. Um, we got our two side plates, battery strap, top plate, which goes in between the two side mounts. We got our plastic pieces, um, top guard, and our hardware and some more screws. And then also I got a battery strap. Okay, so we got our F4 25 amp ESC and flight controller, 401 ESC and flight controller out. Um, the first thing you need to do, note that there are six little pins right here, and we're going to pull the flight controller off the top of the ESC so that we can get to the ESC, and we're going to go in and we're going to tin all of our spots for connecting the motors. All right, next let's go ahead and look at uh, your connections on the flight controller. Um, I am going to wait until I get this tin before I go back to the ESC and connect my battery wires. So we'll do that next. But here on your flight controller, I'm going to be using um, my favorite Lemon DSMX SAT. So right here we have your signal wire for your, your SAT receiver. And then this is your 3.3 volt. And then you're going to come back to here for your ground. So we're going to tend those three. And then over here, this flight controller has a built-in OSD, so you can get your voltage read out. So that's really nice. Makes this build really quick and simple. And then right here on this end where it says VTX, that's going to be your signal wire. This is going to be your power. And then this is going to be your ground. And that's going to go to your VTX. And then up here on this end, which I don't know if I can tilt it so you can see it. Here we have... Your 5 volt for your cam, your VTX, sig your camera signal wire, and your ground. So we need to go ahead and tin these three, these three, these two, and this one is the third. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is 
We're going to go ahead and connect our, our battery connection cable. Um, I'm going to use an XT60. Um, I know a lot of people are using XT30s now. They're a little bit more lightweight, but almost everything that I use has XT60 on it, so I'm going to stick with that. Your negative is on the front side of the arrow, and your positive is on the back side of the arrow. Okay, so the next step, now that you got your battery connector soldered onto the ESC board, is we're going to go ahead and look at the options that we have to mount the flight controller and ESC onto the frame. Um, you have two different options here. The kit comes with these little soft, kind of spongy plastic uh, standoffs, which you can put, as you see I did here for, for purposes of showing you guys, you can put those there and then screw these down on loosely because you may want to take or just put two of them on so that you can go ahead and start to mount your motors and measure your wires and then start to solder them to the ESC. The other option would be is, and that's a, another great thing about this frame design, is you can just take the cube, you can put, after you get everything connected to the flight controller and ESC, you can go ahead and take the cube, connect it together, and then just double side tape use double-sided tape to put it down onto the frame. All right, so the next step, guys, is going to be to put your motor on the frame. I'm just going to use one, one bolt to put the motor on there and hold it in place just for the sake of measuring the wires to the ESC. Go ahead and do each one going around and connect them to the ESC. I'm going to throw up the ESC diagram for just two or three seconds. It will also be listed as a link in the description below. So if you, you can either pause it on there or you can go and grab a copy of it yourself, and that way you know exactly what motor is going where, which you can change in BLA Chelly if you need to, if you want to do, to do it a different way. As I pointed out though, do keep in mind that there are arrows on the board already showing the direction. And I also want to make a point that this round curve, this is the front part of the frame, and this section back here is the back. It's a little bit different on a diagram, on the first print of the diagram. So I'm also going to throw that up there right after the diagram of the ESC. And you can see exactly so you know for reference what is the front and what is the rear. One other quick tip is... With these Brother Hobby 1407 motors, the screws, since the frame plate is 4.5 millimeters thick, the screws are just getting into the motor enough for me to consider it safe. If I would go ahead and use these feet sleeves right now, I think it would be really pushing it. And I also highly recommend that you go get yourself some thread locker. All you need is the purple. The purple is plenty good enough. Um, to make sure that the screws are tightened down in the motors when you finally got everything, all your wires trimmed and it's connected and you're ready to permanently put the motors on, make sure you put some thread locker on those because that's going to be very important. Okay, guys, so go around, get all your motors on, wires trimmed, solder to the ESC, and then move on to the next step. Now, I am by no means Joshua Bardwell. Not all of us can be that damn cool. But I do have lots of people ask me questions. One question that I get got here recently and have had, received this question a few times is if you have a wire that's too small and you need to strip it, what's the best way to do that? If you don't have a wire stripper that can do that small of the diameter, what do you do? So I'm going to show you what I do. I take a little extracto knife and I come in here. And I very carefully find my tip. I slice back and forth until I can feel it. If you pay attention, you can feel when that blade hits the wire. Then I spin in my fingers the wire so that it rotates around. And I just grab the tip and pull it off. So there's your tip for the day. And... By God, you've learned something. All right, now don't you guys be thinking I'm hating on Mr. Bardwell. His catch line, the way he starts every episode, is of epic proportion. And I've learned a lot from him, and I am a subscriber. My only beef with Mr. Bardwell is that he doesn't fly Tom Quads.
All right, so let's move on. Your next step here is going to be taking your two side plates, and there's also this little piece here in the center, and then another one in the back, and then your top plate, how you're gonna put those together. You're gonna find in your kit, there's gonna be four of these and, and the screws, two for each standoff. You're gonna have one here, one there, one there, and one there. And we're gonna put that together. And the reason we're gonna put that together is we need to measure our wires from our VTX. And once we get this together, then we can feed the wires down through the top plate and we can get an idea of the measurement of how long we need them to be to solder them to the plate controller. So go ahead and put those together and then we'll go ahead and move on and get things soldered up. We're getting close guys. All right guys, so the last step, now that you got everything soldered up to the flight controller, um, I mentioned the areas earlier, like I said, the diagram is in, is below, and and we also had a picture that if you wanna pause on the diagram of the flight controller, you can do that also. Um, the last step is to take your side mounts. You'll notice here on the bottom that there's two slots in the top and two slots in the bottom. And the side mount is going to slide into that, and then you're going to firmly press down so it's completely flat against the main frame plate. And then you're going to have two of these small screws right here and two nylon nuts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of needle nose pliers and I'm going to set that in there and hold it. And then I'm going to stick this screw up through the bottom. And while I'm holding it, take a screwdriver and tighten those down. And that connects permanently, strongly, the frame to the uh, to the side mounts in the top part. Um, as far as your know, VTX here, I use double-sided tape on that. It's been no issue. And then underneath of it where I did my Lemon DSMX satellite receiver, I did double-sided tape on that also. Um, checked with the props plenty of clearance. What I do believe I'm going to do is get a couple little tiny tubes and put them on the antennas just to protect them and keep them up completely out of the way. Now one other quick thing that I want to mention is that the Omnibus flight controllers do not support the ability to bind a Spectrum SAT receiver via Betaflight configurator. So you need to use a full RX and connect the SAT receiver to that. Or if you have another drone that you've been working with or flying that you already have a, a, a SAT receiver bound on it, you can use it to bind the SAT receiver and then you can plug it into the um, F4 Omnibus board and then you'll be good to go. Other than that, this thing is an absolutely amazing Super tough looking little quad. I cannot wait to fly this. I've always wanted to do a three inch build and I think that it's going to be just off the ever loving hook on 4S. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into um, BL BLH Heli Suite and I'm going to make sure that my motors are spinning in the right direction and then I am going to calibrate my ESCs and be also keep in mind too that this board um, from what I've read, has no issues whatsoever as far as just changing your settings to D-Shot 600. So I highly recommend you do that. I know I am going to do that. Uh, and basically you're calibrating your ESCs before you switch the setting to D-Shot to D -shot 600. So um, it's not something that you have to do. Um, I'm kind of recommending it just because any of my other builds that I've done D-Shot 600 on, that's something that I've always done and I've heard from some other people that that's a wise choice to do. So next step after that, which we don't need to go into that in the video, is just make sure you take your screws out after you got everything ready to go and you're about ready to go made in this thing. Take each one screw at a time out of the motors. Make sure you put your Loctite on it if you haven't already done that. And make sure that they're Loctited up and you should be good to go. And last but not least, uh, I'll give you guys a little quick tidbit of what's coming up on the channel. 
Uh, we got some thunderstorms going on here in Ohio, so as soon as the sun breaks through the sky on that crap, I will be outside maidening, maiden flying the XBL2, and I will have a full review of the XBL2, and I'll also be working on the tuning in the meantime, and then I'll have my PIDs available in that in that review also. As far as the Tomo Quads thing, we got something really, really special coming up. It's going to be the next build, and it's going to be so huge that we're going to have a series on it. Um, I will give this little tiny tidbit. I talked to Tomo, and we were throwing around some things, and he decided to do kind of a dream idea that I've been looking into myself, and it's going to be a super lightweight frame. That is, Are you ready for this? going to be able to support multiple setups that can be swapped out on the fly and also multiple prop sizes clear up the six inch so that's something that tom has never done before and the way he's doing it is sheer brilliance as always because you know what tom aqua's motto is innovative design brings performance all right guys thanks for sticking around hope you liked the build video hope it was able to help some of you out if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and happy flights to sit out.